and good evening. This is Anita and I welcome you to another edition of the Kingdom Series Live. It's Wednesday and that means we are diving, we are unpacking, we are digging into God's kingdom tonight and his word. And I just welcome you as you join on tonight. I welcome you. Feel free to like and share as you come on. We are live tonight on Facebook, we are live tonight on Instagram, and I welcome you again as we continue the Kingdom series, and tonight I have a really exciting message that I'm looking forward to sharing, and it's entitled, The Kingdom Woman, Re-Evaluating Our Identity in Christ, and that evaluating i made it into re-evaluating because tonight we are going to go back to the beginning we are going to go back we're going to examine the creation of woman and we're going to see really and truly what was the purpose that god created woman for all right so welcome 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 as you join on hi auntie rashida good night to you i welcome you guys and i hope that all is well I pray that you are striving and doing well in the Lord and we are continuing to grow. We are continuing to seek the face of God. Good night, Dima. How are you tonight? I welcome you all on tonight. This is the Kingdom Series. And you know, when we started the Kingdom Series and when we kick-started the Kingdom Series in um, February, we started a teaching on kingdom character. You know, last year we built on the very foundation of the kingdom of heaven. And then this year we moved into, you know, kingdom character. What is kingdom character? When we come into God's kingdom, what do we expect to happen to us and our character as we change and transform into that person that God has created us to be? And, you know, we're examining different aspects of kingdom character. We're examining the fruits of the spirit, you know, and now we are going into the kingdom woman. What is a kingdom woman? What is, you know, what what is the definition of a kingdom woman? You know, so many definitions of woman are out there and many of us find and identify ourselves through those you know through those uh, uh um identities that people may have created for us that the world may have created for us the world creates many different identities for women and tells us that this is who we are to be but what is your creator saying what is your creator, the one who made you the manufacturer? What does he say about you? You know, what did he create you to be? And this is where we always go back to the very beginning because we want to know what God has to say. I want to know what God has to say about me. And I'm certain that all the other ladies who are, you know, coming on tonight, you want to know what God says about you. And I really pray that after tonight, you know, you are going to get a proper idea of this kingdom woman, the original kingdom woman that God created when he made the heavens and the earth. So we're going to get into it. It's a bit much material. So I'm going to try to, you know, go through as quickly as possible. And this is just the foundation of the kingdom woman. We're going to continue next week, you know, as we get deeper into examining who is this kingdom woman. And I'm going to tell you up front, that a kingdom woman is a dangerous woman. A kingdom woman is a dangerous woman. Dangerous to who? Not dangerous to other human beings, but dangerous to the forces of darkness. A kingdom woman is dangerous to the forces of darkness. Let me tell you something. When you are a true kingdom woman, when you come into your identity as a kingdom woman, the devil fears you. He's going to fear you. When you wake up in the morning, he's going to be, oh my God, let me see how I could take her down. But as a kingdom woman, I'm telling you, you're going to make a dent in the kingdom of hell. And this is why our identity as woman of God has been stolen from us. Because the, the enemy does not want us to come into true identity of our purpose that God created us for. If we truly knew, knew who we were, then i'm telling you as i said the devil will have to run you know so as i said let's just get into it you know i'm gonna start i'm gonna pray and then we're gonna get into the teaching you know today god has been giving me so much insight 
into creation, especially into the creation of woman and things that I never saw before. You know, God has been opening up my eyes to certain revelations and I'm so excited to share it with you. I know it's going to edify you, it's going to build you, it's going to add something of value to your life. So let's just open in prayer tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Father, we just praise your name tonight, Lord. We glorify you, Jesus. We give you praise tonight, Father. We bless your holy name, God. And Father, as we come before your throne tonight, my God, to drink from your throne room, to eat of the bread of heaven tonight, God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word. I thank you for your presence. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are taking control of this situation right now, God. You take control of my vessel. I pray that everything that comes out of my mouth will be for your honor and for your glory, God. Move me out of the way we want to hear from you tonight, God. And I pray for every listener tonight, God, that you, Father, will do that work in their heart, make their hearts receptive to receiving your word, Lord. And I thank you for the change and transformation that is going to come out of this teaching for your honor, for your glory, in Jesus' name. Amen. So I welcome you. If it's your first time in the Kingdom series, I welcome you on tonight. And for those of you who have been here time and time again, I welcome you. So we're getting into the teaching, guys. The Kingdom Woman, reevaluating our identity in Christ. And in order to understand our true identity as a Kingdom Woman, we must go back to the creation. We must go back to the beginning. You know, when you talk about kingdom woman, and when you talk about virtuous woman, that's that's the phrase that we, we usually hear. We usually hear virtuous woman. And we immediately think of Proverbs 31. Now, Proverbs 31 is an excellent, excellent, excellent analysis of what a true daughter of God is. And, you know, we have, we, we will be examining it later on. But, you know, as I was preparing this message, the Lord took me back to the very creation. You see, because in order to understand a thing, we have to understand its origins. We have to understand what the very purpose of a thing is. So, you know, we were understanding the kingdom of God from the beginning. We understood about creation and when God created the heavens and earth. But when it comes to woman, we have so many mixed you know, views, mixed thoughts, mixed schools of thoughts, mixed emotions, because we, you know, we know that Eve was the one that was tempted first. Eve was the one that ate the fruit first. Eve was the one that gave Adam the fruit. So I think that over the years we have developed this um, tainted view of who Eve is and who Eve, sorry, who Eve was and who God created her to be before the fall of man. And this is what we are going to examine. And I want you to picture in your mind creation before the temptation, before the fall. Because prior to the fall of man in the garden, everything that God made was good. The Bible says so in Genesis. Everything that he made, when he looked at it, he said, he saw it was good. It was good. It was good. It was good. So this is where we are going to just put a pin and we're going to look at the original woman that God created. And when he looked at her, he would have said, it, it is good. This creation of mine is good. We are going to put aside the fall. We're going to put aside Eve falling to temptation. We're not going to examine that tonight. We are going to examine the original woman that God created us to be. Who is she? Who is she? And I can tell you for a fact that the woman that exists in this world today we have come very far from the original identity that God created us to be. We have come very far. And it's sad, but it's not irreversible. Because when you come into the kingdom of God, you will be transformed back to that kingdom woman. And I'm going to get into it tonight. So I just want to read a little bit of what I wrote today. And it's, God created everything in order. First the heavens and the earth, then creatures of every kind, and then man. So in order of creation, he created heavens, he created earth, he created creatures, then he created man. God established, and I want you to pay attention because we're going, I'm building the foundation to where I'm going with this kingdom woman. It's, it's necessary for us to understand. 
God established the purpose for every system of nature when they were created. He established how the sun would function, how the rain would function, how the plants and animals would function. To this very day, nature still operates exactly as God ordained. The sun, it rises when it's supposed to. The trees grow and bear fruit as they're supposed to. Animals operate in the specific function that they were created for. And I know you can agree with me. The ecosystems of the world function in synergy and order. If we examine an ecosystem, if we examine a forest, we would see that there is a, an order that nature operates under. The animals, the trees, everything and every creature knows exactly what its place is, what its function is. And why is that? The reason is that when God established his very creation, from the moment he established his creation, he spoke into that creation its function. He spoke it into being immediately so that this, the, whatever he created, it would have been birthed and it would have had its function placed inside of it. And up to this day, nature, for the most part, you know, we do have, you know, little times that nature would go out of whack. But most, I would say, yes, majority of the time, nature functions exactly as it's supposed to. The rain falls when it's supposed to, to fall. The planets orbit exactly how they, they, they are supposed to. Nothing is out of sync. Right? So, if the sun didn't rise in the morning, we, we, we don't know what would happen to us. We would die because we need the sunshine. So, God put everything in order. And I want to I wanna prove that to you. I want to take you to Job chapter 38, where God is showing Job exactly how he made creation. Okay? And this is Job chapter 38. I'm just going to read a little bit for you. The entire chapter is talking about creation. It's talking about how God put every single thing in order and in its place. Okay, so let's go. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this who darkens counsel by words without knowledge? Now prepare yourself like a man. I will answer you and you shall, you shall answer me. He's asking Job. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? When the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Who shut in the sea with doors when it burst forth and issued from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and tick darkness its swaddling, swaddling band. When I fixed my limit for it. This is the sea he's talking about. God fixed a limit for the sea. And set bars and doors. When I said, this far you may come, but no farther. And here your proud waves must stop. And this is just a fraction of creation. Where God put order in every single thing that he created. It is established he established it. He said, have you commanded the morning since your days began and caused the dawn to know its place? So everything, everything. You know, later on, he talks about, you know, the, 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 the light and the darkness and how he established where the light would be and where the darkness would be and how the sun would rise. And man was no different. When God created man, he put function and order in humanity. And it's sad because out of all God's creation, humanity is the very one that has strayed away from God's function, his original function. We are the ones that operate out of sync with God and his original intent and purpose. And that is the sad part. And that is why the earth has been plunged into, you know, the condition that it is right now, because if we as humans were to operate in the in the proper function and the proper order of what God created us to be, our world would be perfect. Our world would not be, you know, facing wars and, 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 and perils and famine and it would not be that way. It would operate completely in the function that God intended it to be. So we know that when God created his, 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 his creation, everything, 
he spoke into that thing exactly how it's supposed to function so let's move on and as i said when man was created the same process followed man was given his purpose and orders to function on the earth and as i said we have lost our identity as kingdom citizens over the many 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 years since the garden of eden with it's been lost over the years but god wants us to go back and understand who he made us to be and that there is there is hope for us to get back to that place and to operate in his function and order so that our lives our lives can be full our lives can be successful our lives can be as god intended it to be all right so what was the original purpose of man we all know that we all know the scripture genesis 1 26 to 28 then god said let us make mankind in our image in our likeness so that they may rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky over the livestock and all the wild animals and over all the creatures that move along the ground so god created mankind in his own image and in the image of god he created them male and female he created them god blessed them and said to them so this is the point they were created this is the point where god is speaking into the being called humanity human being it's our function and purpose and he said be fruitful and increase in number and the, the, the um, King James would say, be, be fruitful and multiply, right? I'm reading from the new, a new international version. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky, over every living creature that moves on the ground, right? So we know what the original purpose and function of mankind was. We were to be fruitful, increase in number. We were to reproduce human beings were to reproduce right from adam and eve all mankind was supposed to come out of them fill the earth and subdue it meaning we were to have dominion dominion meaning that we were to take care we were to govern god's earth according to how he instructed us to do it okay i always use the reference of an ambassador that goes to another country to represent you know their country they would function under the the rules and the laws of the original home country all right so this is the same thing we came you know we were we were created with a heavenly mandate on earth god expanded his kingdom on earth and we were created to do, have dominion over the earth not in a not in a bad way not to overpower earth, not what we're seeing these days with wars going on and people fighting each other that's not what we know that's the opposite of what God intended. We were to take care of the earth. We were to take care of the earth. Genesis 2.15 said, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. This is when Adam was created. Now, Adam was created before Eve. He was the first of mankind. We know that God formed him out of the dust of the earth. God breathed it into him. And, and, and he became a living being. And when God created Adam, he took Adam and he put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and to take care of it. Adam was supposed to take care of the garden. He was a, he was a gardener, for want of a better word. But he was supposed to, you know, look after God's creation. That's what he was supposed to do. That's his work. Okay? Adam was given his instructions. So let's move on. And I'm building the story to show you the the entry of woman into the earth and the amazing you know function that women were originally created for and building up the story it, it it has it's necessary to build a story so we seeing here adam he is now in the garden and then then god said when he put him in the garden when he put him in the garden to work it then God said, then God said, the Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now, think about it. Do we think that God made Eve as an afterthought? If we say that, then we don't understand the God of creation because everything that God created 
It was, it was well thought out. It was well planned. If we look at the how the universe functions, everything that God created operates in such precision. Right? Everything operates in precision. And if we were to think that, that, that God would have been so, you know, um, unsure of himself that he would have just made Eve as an afterthought, then we are very wrong about the God that we serve. Eve was not an afterthought. It was, it was in the plans to make woman. But it's the way God established his creation of woman is very interesting. And this is where God showed me so many insights today that really opened my mind and I was like wow so okay so the Lord now is planning to make this helper for Adam okay and then right after that I write after God says it is not good for the man to be alone I will make a helper suitable for him God brought all the creatures he didn't just go and make Eve at the same time listen he did not just, okay, I'm going to make this woman. And he just went and made the woman. He did something before he made the woman. Right? God then brought all the creatures and he brought them to Adam to give them a name. All right? Genesis 2.19 says, Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground, pay attention, the Lord God had found out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But for Adam, no suitable helper was found. This is important, guys. And then God created woman. Why did God bring all the animals why did the bible you know specify just before the creation of woman between when god said he's going to make her and then when he actually made her why is there this paragraph sorry this scripture why is it there it is there to show us something god was so intentional about what he was doing okay guys the order in which woman was created was not done by chance or second thought as I said, everything God did is, was, was, was with precision, with thought, or with wisdom. Okay? So, the way in which he did it was intentional so that he could establish the true purpose and mandate for which females were created. Let me go on. We have to remember, remember, guys, think about it. Adam was one man. Adam did not have a reference point of learning except for the knowledge and wisdom that God gave him. He was the only man. We now, we will, you know, we in today's world, we learn from our fathers, we learn from our mothers, we learn from the people around us. Adam had nobody to learn from. The only wisdom and knowledge that Adam had would have been what God would have put in his, his mind. And this is why God himself was teaching leading and grooming adam into being human we have to understand adam didn't just wake up and just know everything about being human right so god was teaching him god was establishing you know this adam he was showing adam what it was to be human what it was to be a man what it was to be the person that he created him to be he's telling him okay i want you to till this garden God had to give him the instruction. He didn't know that is what he was supposed to do. God gave him the instruction. He took Adam. He put him in the garden. So God is his father. He, God is the original father. Adam is the original earthly human son. And God is teaching him directly. Remember, there was a direct relationship between God and Adam. Okay, so Adam is learning. He's learning. He's learning the ways of life. He's learning the ways of being a human being. And God is teaching him. But God brought the animals to Adam before he made a woman. Why? Let me tell you why. Before he created woman, God brought every other creature for Adam to name. Because God wants to show him that the only other compatible partner for him would be woman. When God showed me that today, it blew my mind. I didn't, I, you know, I read so many times. 
in the Genesis and this never this never occurred to me. And it's only today that the Holy Spirit opened up my eyes to understand. The reason that God, before he presented Eve to Adam, God brought all the creatures. He would have brought whatever creature was, was made at that time, whether it be an a, a elephant or a lion or whatever. He brought those creatures to Adam and he said, Adam, you name them. But the Bible say that after he named all of them, no suitable helper was found. God wanted to show Adam so that when he made this woman, when he makes this woman, that Adam, you're not going to understand that the only person that you will be compatible with is this woman that I am making for you as a partner. As a partner. So we need to understand, you know, many people have this impression that Eve was created because the Bible says we're the maker helper, but she was not made to be a servant to Adam. We're going to get into the, 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 the magnitude of the responsibility of what a woman who was created after God was supposed to be before the temptation, before the fall. All right, so let's go on. So as I said, he brought all these animals. And he said, uh, uh, um, Adam, you name them. By the time Adam was done, he realized that none of them were compatible to him. Why? Adam could not reproduce with a lion. Adam could not build with an elephant. And uh, no animal has hands. No animal has a mind of wisdom like a human being and this is what God is trying to show him so that when he gives him this woman Adam will understand and appreciate what God is giving him and he will know hey this is my partner this is my partner I appreciate that this is the partner God is giving me all right so that that revelation was so amazing so as I said no helper was found no helper no helper was found comparable. Like that word is so important. Comparable to Adam. Comparable. Just the same, comparing to Adam the same way Adam is made. He's a human. There was no other human. So we need to understand that God is now be, going to create Adam's perfect, compatible partner. And he wants to show him. Right? So, as I said, no creature could match Adam in physical appearance and mental capacity. So now we move in to the actual creation of one. And listen, God went into the very DNA of Adam to create this compatible being. In order to make somebody that was so compatible, he literally went into Adam. He did not go and take, do the same process that he did to make Adam, to make Eve. He could have. He could have took, t taken earth and he could have made a, a body and he could have breathed life into Eve. But he did not. Why is that? There is a reason for that. Let me show you. One is that so Eve would be the perfect compatible partner for Adam not just for Adam, but for God's purpose. To establish God's purpose on the earth. Because you remember that Adam was given a mandate. And God said it is not good for him to continue by himself. God made a partner that was compatible to join together with Adam to build. To build. To have the same mandate that God gave Adam to complete it together. And this is what Eve was created for. Eve was created to work alongside, to come alongside, to partner in a perfect compatible way with Adam. Okay? I want to show you something. I want to show you something. Why did God take, this was, this blew my mind today. I tell you, God was just blowing my mind today. Why did God take a bone out of Adam and make Eve? I always wondered that. It was like, why, why he didn't just make Eve just like how he made everything else? You know, from the earth. Because the, the, the scriptures say, let's go back. Let's look at it. 
Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the other creatures. Everything else was created out of the ground except Eve. Why? And the Lord showed me something that I just that's it, it blew my mind. Mary. God went into the very DNA of Adam. He took this bone and he made Eve. Why? Let me show you why. When God made Adam, he spoke the commandment that Adam was to be what? Fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And we know that when God speaks a word, he stands by his word. So God establishes his order. When he says, listen, see, you can't go further than this. Sun, this is how you have to rise. Wind, this is how you have to blow. That's what he stands by. He stands by his word. This is why when he said if they eat the fruit, they will die. This is why when they ate the fruit, God can just say, I forgive you and move on. He had to stand by his word because his word is his word. His word is law. He is a righteous, you know, ruler. He will never go against what he spoke. And he, when he made Adam, he spoke into Adam. That Adam, Adam was to be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. But remember, Adam by himself could not be fruitful and multiply. Okay? When God speaks a word, he cannot go against it. He always operates under his own word alone. Therefore, since God had established that the whole human race was to come out of Adam, the original template, God had to create Eve out of Adam's body. Wow. Listen. I'm going to say that again. And I hope you're getting this. If you're getting this, say amen. Or just put a yes in the comments. God made Adam. He said, Adam, you be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth. And this is why. He could not have, the, the command was already given that out of Adam, the fruitfulness and the multiplication would come. And this is why God had to go inside of the man and take a, a bone. It came out of him. All creation had to come out of Adam. Therefore, Eve had to come out of Adam and be his perfect compatible partner so that now they could reproduce as man and woman and fill the earth. Wow. Let me tell you. God is so amazing. The human race could only be multiplied out of Adam's body. So this is why he took the rib. So we understand now Eve is made this perfect, compatible partner. But I want to show you that the Bible said, and, and, and many people get tied up when they say, God said he's making a helper for Adam. A helper. Most people assume that Eve was simply Adam's assistant. I'm going to show you the magnitude of this woman that God created for to work alongside Adam. Let me show you the magnitude. So, as I said, we always go back to the beginning, right? The Hebrew, the original Hebrew word for helper that God used to describe Eve, Eve is the Hebrew word Isa. E Z E R. Eza, you pronounce it. Eza, Eza. It comes from the root Eza. That's the word that God used originally when He created. And He said, Helper. He said, Eza. What does Eza mean? What does it signif signify? The root, the root of, of Eza is a helper or an ally, A-double-L-Y. The word signifies a strong ally. Someone who comes to your aid when you need reinforcement. It has a very strong military significance to the word Isa. So this original woman that God created, Eve, she was not no wishy-washy woman. She was not just sitting there waiting for Adam to say, go do this, go do that. She was working together as a helper. She was coming alongside with him as an ally. Do you understand what I'm saying? She's an ally. She's a reinforcement. If you're fighting a war and you can't fight the war by yourself, another country will come in and be an ally to you. And they will come alongside you. And they, they together, together you will be stronger to be able to fight and to win the war. And this is what, this is the word that God used to represent this woman, Eve. Isa, a strong ally, 
somebody who would come to your aid when you need reinforcement. Wow. And the, 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 the wonderful or something, this word is a, was used by God to refer to his own self in the Bible. There were a few places this word was used, and one of them is where God used that word to refer to himself. Wow. So woman, if you don't understand who you are in God by the end of tonight, you need to go back and listen to this message all over again. We need to get the true meaning and context of who we are. And I'm telling you, when you get the true context and meaning of who you are, all the concepts and all the identities that the world gives us as well, we're going to throw them in the garbage bin. We're going to throw them in the garbage bin and we're going to take up the true identity of a kingdom woman that our father made us to be because she's awesome. She's awesome. She is a force to be reckoned with. The kingdom woman is a force to be reckoned with. And as I said, not against other human beings, but against the forces of darkness. God said, I will put enmity between the woman and you. I will put enmity. Let me tell you, we were created to fight the forces of darkness. We were created as warriors to take down the works of hell. That is what God, he made us an ally, a fighter, not to fight one another, not to fight uh, humanity, to fight the enemy, the true enemy. Okay? So let's understand that Isa is a strong warrior. She's a worker. She's a builder. So as I said, she builds together with the man. In Hosea chapter 13, verse 9 this is where God refers to himself as Isa. He uses that same word that he used to, to, to describe Eve in that book. Here's what he said. You have destroyed yourself, O Israel, for in me is your help. This is where the word Isa, your help. For in me is your help. God is saying that the same way he's a helper to his people, that's what he created Eve to be, to Adam. A helper. Not just God, if God could say that he is, he, he referred to himself as Isa and referred to the woman as Isa, does that mean to say then that God is saying that he is there at our beck and call? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. He is an ally. He is a, he's the one that when we call upon him, he comes to help. He reinforces us. He strengthens us. He fights for us. And that is what who, who, that is who God created the kingdom woman to be powerful 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 so as i said god created eve to join together with adam to fulfill the heavenly mandate what is the heavenly mandate let us examine it so let's see you know as asking god i said what was eve doing in the garden lord you know because they said god put adam to, to tend the garden right so I was like, what was Eve doing in all this time? I, I, I literally asked God. I said, what was Eve doing? Well, what, you know, what was her function? And the Lord started to reveal Eve's, Eve's function to me, to me. Sorry. And the first one is to work alongside Adam to do the work that God instructed. Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth, subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea, the birds in the sky, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. We were created to fulfill that mandate. We need to understand that we have to build God's kingdom on earth. Women, we are called to build the kingdom. We are called to, first of all, what was the first commandment God gave to Adam and Eve? Be fruitful and increase in number. Our first, our first mandate as human beings, we don't like to hear it, but it's right there in the word of God. God didn't say have dominion first. He didn't say it. He, he speaks and everything he speaks is intentional. God don't just speak as he feels to speak and just say things after the fact. He says exactly what he has to say exactly in the order he has to say. So the very fact that the first words that God uttered to humans to Adam and Eve and the instruction he gave them was to be fruitful and increase in number means to say that our mandate as human beings is to reproduce that's what we're here to do 
Spirits don't have genders. Spirits are, 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 are spirits. There's no male and female spirit. So in our bodies, there is a spirit that is not is, is genderless. But for the purposes of earth, God created us with a gender to be able to reproduce, to reproduce, to reproduce. We have to be fruitful and increase in number. Why? Because God wanted his kingdom, simply because God wanted his kingdom, kingdom expanded in the earth. He wanted his kingdom to be expanded on the earth. Notice I said his kingdom. So that doesn't mean to say today that we're just going to multiply like, like rabbits. No. God wants us to, 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 to have kingdom offspring. His, his, of, his kingdom offspring. We as women are supposed to give birth to God's kingdom citizens. We are called as women to give birth and to multiply God's kingdom children, his generations. God wants generations of his kingdom children on this earth. And it's sad because many women who are, who are still not in that place of understanding who they are, they are still not in the Lord and they are, they are having children. And these children are going down the line with the same generational curses that they inherited from their mothers and fathers going up the line. And that's the reason why so many of the, the, the of, are in so much of humanity are in a mess today. Because, you know, the mandate, the original mandate was lost. And man entered into sin. And man lost the identity. When I say man, I mean man and woman. We lost our identity. So no longer are we building kingdom generations. We're just having children. We're just having children. That's not what God called us to do. It wasn't just about having children to fill the earth. It was about having godly generations come out of us. His kingdom on earth. His kingdom on earth multiplied through us. So we have a very big responsibility. Ladies, we have an, a, a responsibility to reproduce and to bring forth godly seed. Godly seed. We have to raise children for the Lord. And, you know, it's sad because over the years, we've taken the, the um, you know, the ability to have children as something trivial. You know, we've taken it as trivial. You know, we see all these abortion laws and stuff coming out now that we've trivialized the ability of a woman to have children. And it's not supposed to be trivial. It's trivial. It's serious. It's serious. We just, we, as I said, it's not because God called us to make children. We're just going to make willy-nilly children. We were called to reproduce God's kingdom on the earth. So all the children that come out of us, we have a responsibility to raise them as God's seed, as godly children, to know the Lord, to, to walk in the ways of the Lord, so that God's kingdom can be expanded. And that is one, that is the very first uh, uh, um, um, function of a kingdom woman to raise godly children. God wants us to raise godly children, not just any, just to make a child and just leave it there to grow up any old how, or grow up under the influences of the world, or grow up, you know, you know, um, disorderly, grow up not knowing the Lord. That's not no. That's not what we are supposed to do. So if you're a kingdom woman, understand your function is to raise a godly generation. You have to. You must. That is, that is your mandate. So as I said, we must be fruitful. Dominion, ladies, we have to oversee and be administrative, uh, administrators of earthly affairs alongside Adam. Alongside Adam. So God didn't make Adam to work by himself. And he didn't make Eve to work by herself. If you look at the divine order of things, they were to work together. To build. They were to work together to build. They were to work together to oversee. They were to work together to administer, administer earthly affairs. It's a togetherness. Because God knew that when they came together, it would be a powerful, complete work that they would have done. Adam's work was to tend, keep the garden. Guess what? That would have been Eve's job too. She's a helper. 
Eve didn't have to cook at that point. They ate of the fruit of the tree, right? She didn't have a kitchen. She didn't have a stove. She didn't have a house to sweep and to clean and to mop. So Eve's work would have been the same work Adam was doing. The same work. He was put there to till the ground, to tend the ground, to keep the garden. Eve would help him to do that. And then they would go and pick up the fruit of the trees and they eat that and they're good. Right? So this is not in any way diminishing house, household chores, guys. Not at all. It is important and I'm going to get to that. As a woman, nothing. It, 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 we, we shouldn't also trivialize our household chores. That is so important. It's important for us to be homemakers. It's important for us to be nurturers. But I'm saying that we are originally called to build with our partner. Build together with him. Build God's kingdom on the earth. Build. Yeah? So, let's move on. The Lord God created woman in such a unique way. Bone. Bone. You know, last year, August, the Lord gave me a revelation concerning this bone. And he brought it back to my remembrance today. And I went and I pulled it, pulled it up. There are so many significant, you know, um, symbol, symbolic relationship, a, a metaphoric relationship between the bone and the woman. I'm going to show you a few. Bone is strong. What, think about a bone. How strong a bone is. A bone can stand up under immense pressure. Our skeletal bones hold up our entire body. Without our, without our bones, we'd be a helpless pile of flesh women are made strong like bones guys we strong a kingdom woman is a strong woman we are not weak by any means we are not weak by any means and when i say weak i'm not talking about physical strength i'm talking about your your strength your essence of strength your mind you are strong we know that Women can face immense pressure. You, you could bear children, you could raise family, you could run businesses. We bear the emotional pains of our loved ones. We bear the pains, our arms are strong, we hold babies, we, 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 we comfort, you know, people around us. We are strong. Just like that bone that God took out of Adam and made us strong to endure and to be able to face the pressures of life and stand strong. That's who a kingdom woman is. That's who a kingdom woman is. A woman can, a woman can take real beatings. We all know that. Women, we can stand up against a lot. God made us that way for reason and purpose. We must embrace that. We must embrace our womanhood and stop throwing it away and, and, you know, just casting it aside. Our womanhood is something so beautiful. We, you know, uh, it, it, it's sad because now women want to act like men. We acting like men, we lose the essence of what this great creator made us to be. He, he had, uh, uh, he, watch me, he had something special when he planned to make woman. So we need to understand bones, strong. He made us strong, guys. And it goes back to that word, Isa. The Isa, a strong ally. We can fight, guys. Listen, we all know women are fierce warriors when it comes to our families. I can tell you, you know, when it comes to, to protecting her children and her husband and her family and her household, you better run there for because a woman, a kingdom woman, let me tell you something. There is no fiercer protector than a woman. We're like a lioness. You ever see how those lioness operate? My goodness. You can't play you coming around their, their cubs. You can't. You can't. And you can't come around their, 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 their mate neither. They're fierce. And this is who God made us to be fierce. Listen. The rib bone. Here's the other revelation God gave me. The rib bone comes from the rib cage. The rib cage, what does the rib cage do? The rib cage is a source of protection. What does the rib protect? The rib protects our hearts, guys. We are the ones to protect the hearts. 
we, we, we protect the hearts of our loved ones. We protect the hearts of our children. We protect the hearts of our, our husband. We protect, we protect, we are protectors. Because we was we were made from a rib bone, uh, you know that rib cage. Picture the rib cage; it surrounds, it protects the heart. It it is a a strong protector of that vital organ called the heart. We are protectors. Come on, let's understand who we are. Yes, we protect. We protect fiercely. Yeah, nobody's coming to attack and and destroy our homes and our families when we are on that watch. Nobody's gonna do it. And this is what we need to understand. Our strength lies there. And our ability to be fierce protectors. Yeah? So here's the other thing. The rib cage is, yes, it's strong, but it's designed to accommodate expansion. Think about it. When you breathe, your rib cage expands. It allows you to, to breathe. Women are adapters. Listen, we can adapt to any situation, just like a rib. We are flexible. We could stretch. We could take, watch me. You put a woman in any situation, she could adapt herself quickly. And this is what God made us to do. Quick. We are very adaptive. We are very flexible. Very flexible. And that's his reason for that. God made us so unique and amazing. We need to embrace our womanhood and many other things about the, the, the biology of a bone. If we look at it, we see how it represents who God made us to be. And the sad thing is that the enemy knows what God created this woman to be. This warrior, this fierce warrior, this builder, this amazing woman. Notice none of this was talking about looks. I want us to get this through our head. None of this, absolutely none of it, was talking about physical appearance. That comes after. The value, the core of womanhood comes from the inside of us. Our strength, our emotional strength, our, our love, our capacity to protect and nurture. It comes from inside of us. Nowhere did God talk about the beauty, how the beauty of woman would add to anybody's life. That's just icing on the cake. We all know we're beautiful. We're nice to look at. But at the end of the day, the kingdom woman's value comes from inside what God put in us. So the enemy knows. He knows what God created us for. And he knows that if he could take us away from understanding who we are, then he could destroy us. And once he destroys us, well, guess what happens? He gets to the other people that God put us to protect. Our children, our families, our husbands, our brothers, our sisters, our mothers, our fathers. Whoever who is our circle, once he could get through you, then he could attack them. That's why he would always attack you. How, how, how is the enemy attacking us today how is he attacking us today let me show you let me show you the ways listen from the day that the devil tempted eve he has never stopped he has never stopped in his quest to defile god's perfect creation he succeeded for a moment when eve fell to temptation and she gave into the temptation and they fell in the garden they fell from god's grace they fell out of relationship but that was temporary that was temporary when jesus christ came back on the scene and he paid the price and he restored us the kingdom relationship now women have the full ability to be restored to that complete original kingdom woman that god created us to be listen to what i'm saying in jesus christ in jesus christ now that we have reestablished our relationship, his blood has paid the price. We are restored back to relationship with God. We are the righteousness and holiness in him. We now have the ability to get back to being a kingdom woman. Because over the years from where Eve, where Eve, you know, fell in the garden to when Jesus restored relationship, you know, it was very difficult for women to, uh, to be kingdom because the, the, the relationship was still broken. It was not completely restored. 
And over the years, let me tell you, we have been so misguided from our original purpose. The devil creates identities for us. He uses the world to create identities for us. So he knows that many women are misguided. They don't know who they are. So he here's strategy. If he could get you to believe what he wants you to believe from a very early age in life, that's it. You're lost. Because you're identifying with what he gives to you. You know, what are some of the identities that the world creates for us that has nothing to do with what God created us for? This whole feminist movement is not of God. I can tell you that, 100%. A feminist, what is a feminist? What is a feminist? That is so offensive to our, a kingdom woman. We don't need to use that term to define ourselves. We know what God created us to be. He gave us the word, Isa. He didn't create us to be a feminist and to fight and to be angry and to argue and, and, and to try to be something that we are not. So go, the word feminist and feminism does not exist in the kingdom of God. Yet, Satan has created this idea of being a feminist because he wants to divide man and woman. His strategy is to divide. You know they say he could divide and conquer? That is Satan's strategy. So if he could have div divided God's perfect order of man and woman, he knows if he could get in the middle there that he is going to rip apart God's divine order and everything will fail. Humanity would fail. God's perfect creation, he ripped it apart. And he will continue to rip it apart. But this is why God wants to educate us. He wants us to come into understanding, to get back to the original purpose. And, you know, think about it. If the devil could always have us fighting one another, I'm talking about men and women now. We've seen where now is a war between men and women. There's a war. Women are trying to fighting men. We're fighting men to, to prove to them our identities. We don't have to prove our identity to anyone. You just have to know it and walk in it. That's all. We don't have to fight up and, and fight up and tell a man what we are worth. There is no reason for us to fight up and tell a man, you have to tell this man what you're worth. Come on, no. That's not kingdom. What you have to do is simply understand who God created you to be and walk in that and be that. And whoever, whoever, you know, the people who need to value it will value it. If they don't value it, that's them. That's them. That's their loss. Because a kingdom woman is a valuable woman to a man. If a man truly gets a kingdom woman, let me tell you something. He has a treasure in his hand. The, the, the book of Proverbs say, who can find a virtuous wife? Her worth is far more than rubies. Far more. So ladies, I want to tell you something today. Stop fighting to establish identity. Stop fighting the world and telling the world what they should see in you. Stop telling the world who you are. Just be who you are. Simply be who you are. Simply be that kingdom woman. You know, when, when God pulled me back out of the world, you know, when, when I was saved in 2018, I had such a misguided idea of what a woman was supposed to be. First of all, I was very aggressive because of the things that I've been through in my life because I've been, I grew up with an abusive father. It started there. I saw my father beat my mother. So, of course, I was very angry at the male species. I was really angry. I was angry at the male species. Like, I hate men. Men are just abusers. So I grew up very aggressive towards men. And I know many of us can attest to that. Or if you were, if, 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 you know, you were abused or whatever, you would have ideas of, you know, what you think men are and you would get very angry. And it's very sad that we would have to reach today because of things that happened to us. But God say that you have the chance to turn it around. You don't have to live like that. You know, as I said, when I came back to the Lord in 2018 and he had to take me on a journey and teach me the true value of being a kingdom woman. And the change and transformation happened as I started to apply his word. I started to study his word. I started to behave in the manner that I know he wanted me to behave. I started to apply his word. The, what, the, what did the Bible say in the book of John? God, Jesus said, I am the vine. 
you are the branches. If you remain in me and my word remains in you, you will bear much fruit. And that's what it is. A kingdom woman cannot exist outside of Jesus Christ. That is bottom line. A kingdom woman cannot exist outside of Jesus Christ. Why? Simply because he reestablishes kingdom relationship with us. So it's only through him we can become that kingdom woman. Only through the establishment, the reestablishment of kingdom relationship through Jesus Christ that we can now start the journey of going back to the original mandate of a woman, an Isa. So outside of Jesus, if you're trying to be a kingdom woman, it won't work. It won't work because it, you need the word of God now. You need the Holy Spirit. You need God's guidance. You need him to do the work in you to bring you to, to that place of becoming a kingdom woman. So if you try to do it on your own, it's not going to work. We all know that. It's just, we, you know, just like how I was saying in everything else, the transformation process, the renewing of our minds takes time. And it's just the same way. And it's time that we start to break down the lies that the enemy placed in us over the years. We have a generation of women who are very angry. And the reason that they are angry is because, yes, they have been abused. They have been violated. They have been, you know, treated badly. Yes. But it's time for us to stop giving that power to people. And start taking the kingdom power back. You know, said, become that kingdom woman. We, we, we need to throw out the window all these thoughts about becoming the man that you, you know, you, you, uh, becoming a, like, act like a man. What, what was this? What's the phrase? Um, act like a lady, think like a man. That's rubbish, guys. That's rubbish. Take that and throw it in the garbage bin. Take all those stupid catchphrases that the world gives us. Throw it in the garbage bin. You think like a woman. God made you to be a woman. Think like a woman. So what? God didn't give women enough wisdom that we can't think for ourselves. We have to think like, like, like who he made us not to be. And this is all strategies of the devil. You see, if he, if he takes away the focus from what we originally meant to be, he, he could continue to destroy us. He could continue to destroy us. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you what a kingdom woman does. A kingdom woman stands in her power and authority as a daughter of Christ. She can work together and build a home with her husband. And she can raise godly children. And she can be a warrior for her household. Let me tell you something. A kingdom woman, from the minute that the enemy tries to enter that her, into her home, from the minute that the enemy tries to come into your marriage, immediately god is going to show you because women we have the ability to see things that are coming from a mile off and when the spirit of god is in you and you see that thing coming from a mile off and the, the, the lord shows you shows you that attack coming from a mile off listen we go into the spirit one time we get on our knees and that's where our power is ladies women of god daughters of god let me show you something the power of a kingdom woman is on her knees Praying and warring in the spirit against the attacks against our household, and this is how we fight. We don't fight against our our family members. We don't fight and, and fight against our husbands. We don't fight. We don't fight. No, we fight in the spirit against the principalities and powers that is behind the thing. So once we understand the power of a kingdom woman, we get on our knees and we get in that warfare place and we take down the strongholds and we take down the attacks against our families. And then you will start to see change and transformation. The power of a kingdom woman is amazing. So don't take it for granted. And as I said, you know, now, now we're seeing the, the, the movement of women's identity is all you know because social media is so vibrant and so you know we, we get that quick dopamine hit when we see when we get a few likes on on, on 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 our social media that we're going to create more and more content for men to come and give us a quick like come on ladies time to stop that you know we, we, we need to stop that we need to stop trying to create sexy content for a man to just give us a like quickly and move on that is devaluing yourself that has nothing to do with your value. Nothing to do with your value. Nothing. You know, I received a message in my inbox. Let me tell you this message. I was like, wow. 
a message in my inbox from somebody. I don't even know who this person is, but apparently this person was following me. And and the, the the I would use the term loosely. The gentleman said, "So no more bikini pics and posting up on Facebook." He said, "So no more bikini pics and posting up on Facebook." So uh, you know what? I said, "Ah, I see an opportunity." I normally don't respond to these things, but I saw the opportunity and I said yes. I responded and I said yes. When you come to Jesus Christ and He teaches you your value, you begin to value yourself as He values you. Let me tell you, He never replied. There was no reply after that. None. No more reply. That was it. The conversation shut down immediately. You see, because people are aware and they see that you're starting to value yourself and you ain't gonna be posting, you know. We, we, we saw the carnival gone by and these women, I felt so, you know, heartbroken for these women that they would think that these things that they were putting on would give them value. And because, let me tell you, sex sells, we all know sex sells, so every, you know, one who puts up these pictures, you're going to get, let me tell you, you're going to get thousands of likes. What does that even mean? Does that give you value? A like for a, for a half naked pic gives you value. If that gives you value, I feel sorry for you. Because I was there. I feel sorry for that person I used to be. But I thank God for Jesus Christ who came into my life and taught me my value. I don't have to validate myself by what I put on or, or, or putting a picture up and getting a thousand likes because it's, it, it shows my body. No way. Absolutely no way. My value comes from the Spirit of God that lives in me. My value comes from being an honorable woman of God. My value comes from being an honorable wife, an honorable mother. My value comes from being a, 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 a person who could live and, 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 and uh, walk by the ways of God that he had given in his word. That's where my value comes from. No other place. And women, we need to start to come, come out of this thing that, you know, all these things are the feminist movements and, 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 and this, you know, boss lady movements and all these sort of foolishness. Guys, it's like, like, stop letting the world create titles for you. Go back to the word of God, the man who made you and said, this is what I, and, and, and the funny thing is, the woman that God created us to be is a million times more awesome than any single title or, or identity that the world could create for us. Anyone, anyone. I tell you, a kingdom woman is a powerful woman. She's a powerhouse. A kingdom woman is a powerhouse. Is a powerhouse. Because we know how to walk in the spirit. So guys, I hope that today this gave you an idea, a start of the idea of who we are. And next week, we're going to look at Proverbs 31, and we're going to get into details of some of the qualities of a kingdom woman. So we need to start acting and behaving and, you know, like royalty. 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 We don't get our validation from anybody else but the one who created us. The one who created us. And I said... Outside of Jesus Christ, we cannot fulfill our identity as kingdom woman. You can't do it. You can't do it. You can't do it. There's a difference with a woman who's walking with the Holy Spirit compared to somebody who's not. You can't only accomplish so much without God. He said so in the book of John. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, will bear much fruit. So woman, let's start to understand the the grand deal of who God made us to be. Not, uh, not an aggressor, right? We're only aggressive towards the devil. The only person a kingdom woman is aggressive towards is the devil. We are not, you know, trying to be men. We are women. We are women. Embrace your femininity. We don't have to try to become a man. To get, to get them to notice that we are strong. We are strong. Just be who you are. Just be your strength. Don't try to tell people, Oh, I'm a feminist. Oh, da, da, da. no, just be who God made you to be. And the world will notice. And who doesn't appreciate that? That's their loss. That's fine. Move on. Not everybody's going to be for you. That's fine. Not everybody's created to be for you. That's okay. 
So I'm going to finish up there for today. We are kingdom warriors. We are kingdom women. We are strong. We are Isa, right? We are an ally. We are a militant force. We are destined to do great things for God's kingdom. We raise godly children. We raise godly, you know, generations. We nurture, we pour love and life into the people around us. That's what a woman is, kingdom woman. So I'm going to close off there today. We're going to come back here next week and we're going to continue with the kingdom woman. We're going to look at Proverbs 31. And I just pray that this message has touched you. I pray that this message has empowered you to cut off some of the things that devalue you as a woman and allow you to become the kingdom woman that God created you to be. And, and ladies, if anybody's looking and you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, it's not late. Just you can. The Bible simply says all we need to do is confess him with our mouth. And believe in our hearts that God raised him from the dead. Ask him. Confess, say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I need you. I need a savior. I believe that you died for my sins, that you rose again. I just accept you as my savior. I say, come into my heart and be my Lord. And start, let the, the Lord start working you to build that kingdom. And it takes time, you know. It takes time to cut off the old things that we learned over the years and become this new person. As I said, I was such an aggressive person in, in when it comes to being... You know, you you can tell me, mm, I would flap in your face. And now, no, I know that's not who God created me to be. He created me to be honorable, 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 honorable. And if we honor ourselves and we honor God, our life would reflect that. So let me close up there today, guys. And I will see you back here next week. Have a wonderful week ahead. Stay prayed up. Stay prayed up. Stay prayed up, guys. It's getting messy out there. But we need more kingdom women to start praying and interceding and doing the work of the Lord. So I'll see you back here next week. Like and share the live. And take care until be blessed in the name of Jesus.